What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I'm going to show you on how to use data tables. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. I just want to let you know that I just released a new free ebook that you can download for beginners on how to master Unreal Engine 5, so I'll be linking that in the description. With that said, let's continue with the video. All right, so data tables are a way of organizing data by rows and a structure. So in order to create a new data table in Unreal Engine, we are going to go into our content browser, right click, go to the miscellaneous section, and we have data table over here. So when we go ahead and select a data table asset to create, we need to pick a structure for each row. So a structure is essentially an asset that will contain multiple parameters about, you know, a subject like weapons, items, or builds, whatever you want. In this case, I have a full detailed tutorial on how to use structs in Unreal Engine, so I will be linking them in the description. In my case, I already have this one created, so I'm going to use as build, which is going to be for each build part. Imagine that we're building like a building system, right? Let's click on OK, and let's name this DT for data table, underscore, and then builds in plural. So first of all, let's, you know, go ahead and quickly open up the structure that I built. As you can see, we have three different parameters. We have the name, the static mesh and the icon. And for each build part, I want this filled out. So a data table will allow exactly that. So if I open this up over here, you can see that we have a data table overview over here and we will have a list of all of the rows. So if I go ahead and add a new row into the data table, as you can see over here, I can start to fill in some of the parameters. So first of all, let's fill in the row name. So let's say that the first build is going to be a wall. So let's put in wall. And now with this row selected, I can go into the row editor and with the structure parameters, I can fill them in. So as you can see, I have exactly the ones in my structure. I have the name, static mesh and icon. So now here I can fill in whatever, you know, parameters I need. So the name will be wall once again. The static mesh will be, for example, this, you know, um, I don't know, this control rig solid thing. <laughs> Use that as a test, right? And the icon could be, you know, this um, arrow over here. This is an example, right? And then I could go ahead and add, for example, more rows with, you know, I don't know, the, the floor or the foundation, whatever you want to say, right? I'll fill in now everything. Put the static mesh to be like you know this one and the icon to be you know like um this one right it doesn't really matter it's just a quick example but as you can see we slowly go ahead and build our database with all of our you know build parts in this scenario that i want with all of their you know features and parameters so now how can we use them in blueprints well let's go and create a new blueprint used as a demonstration so let's make just go ahead and create an actor bp underscore build and let me open this up so what we can do is create a new variable so let's put in data table and now i can go ahead and search for the data table if i search data first there we go type and we have a few of them so as you can see in object types, we have data table, which is the generic one. If I compile, as you can see, I can simply go and specify a data table. So I could go ahead and select DT builds. And now in the event graph, I could drag it in. And as you can see, we have different options over here, right? So I could go ahead and type data table. And we have all of the, you know, um, functions and nodes that we can use. For example, we could get all of the row names right as an array and you know we will have uh the amount of you know rows that we have things like that but the real spice is when we you know create a variable for each row so if i go here and say data row right it's a new variable and i go and change this to be a data row you can still have this data table row handle if i compile this and expand this as you can see we have two options First of all, we have a drop down to specify what specific data table we are referring to. In this case, DT builds. And now we have one for each row. So I can select floor or wall, as you can see, which is really cool. And now from there, I can drag this into the graph and start to do things. 
So this is another struct. So if I right click and split it, I have these two outputs. So first of all, the data table itself, which is essentially, you know, this variable, I could even fill it in, right? And then the row name, the specific row name, which is, you know, wall in this case. So what I can do is say get row, and there's this, you know, very useful node where if I, you know, fill in also the data table, I could fill in with this output or also manually search, whatever you prefer. But I essentially get the struct as an output. Now, by default, it's wildcard, but if I drag and say, okay, break, and I know what struct we're using, which is as build, we can drag it up. And as you can see now, I have all of the options, right, of the uh, outputs of the parameters for the wall row. So for example, this name would be the parameter here for wall, which is wall. And then the static mesh would be the control rig solid thing. And then the same with the icon, it will be this arrow, right? As simple as that. I mean, we could do even a test. I could go here and say print, and I could, you know, fill in the name and put this, you know, at the begin play, right? So now when the game starts, I would, if I drag into level, print wall as you can see well it's hitting now with the overview but you get the yes printing that correctly and of course i could do the same you know with the static mesh and the icon and whatever you want so that's pretty much how you can start to use data tables and i just covered the basics in a very simple way so that's it guys if you found this video helpful i would really appreciate it if you could look at that video and subscribe to my channel i love to be five videos and tutorials check out my new ebook now yes with all i said bye bye